Hey everyone, good morning, or at least morning in my part of the world. You get another glimpse of the gorgeous maples outside my windows. That's my view when I'm quilting, isn't it lovely? Welcome everyone, I am Susan Smith. You're in my studio, Stitched by Susan. This is day 20, and I think I said that yesterday, but today I know it is. Today is day 20 of a month of coming on YouTube live each and every morning to talk about quilting related topics. Well, each and every day, it's not always morning. Um, and these are just casual chats about things that occur to me from things that I'm working on or questions that you all have been kind enough to send in to me, burning questions in your mind. So just a casual chat about some of those topics that relate to the art, the craft, the skill of machine quilting. So today I want to talk about how well do you know your machine? And honestly, this does not just apply to quilting. This applies to uh, sewing machines and sergers, and I imagine embroidery machines too, although that's not my particular field. But we're going to talk about what a difference that can make in your the ease of your quilting. So let's see who's checking in here. Uh, Cheryl from Alberta, Canada. Awesome. You guys know by now, I'm sure that I'm a Canadian too. I grew up in BC, was born in Ontario, so Canadian accent here every so often, eh? <laughs> Teresa, Shauna, Shauna found the magnets on sale at Harbor Freight yesterday. Awesome. Again, the, the user warning, they're heavy, they're strong magnets. Don't drop them on your toes and don't get your fingers caught behind them, okay? <laughs> and Patricia Bell, hello from Texas. Another Patricia in Illinois, Debbie in Wisconsin, Gail, Oklahoma City, Kathy in Florida, Elaine. I'm quilting without the stitch regulator. Yay, I'm so happy. How are you finding that? Is it an enjoyable experience? Have you gotten over the nervousness of it yet? Um, do to do to do, do Elaine, can we get a thumbs up for Susan? Thanks, Elaine. Yes, those of you who are enjoying these chats, do please give a thumbs up. This is what helps these videos to become more visible and I sure appreciate it. Oh, hang on a second. We lost connection there for a second, so I'm not sure I'm not sure where we lost track. Sorry about that. But I see Peggy, I see Valerie, I see Marie Suzanne from Bath UK. You have been so I'm not sure what's up with the internet. I usually have very good internet this morning, but it's definitely clicking in and out. We'll see how far we get. Lisa, Sherry, Lisa. Debbie again, told I have a Canadian accent because she's from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which is very close to Canada. Canada, like the US, of course, has a broad range of accents too because it's such a huge country. I mean, smaller countries do too. Think of, think of Great Britain, for example. Paper Lady, Michelle Phillips. And Elaine, I'm loving it and the newfound control, less jerkiness. That's so great, Elaine. You're seeing the benefits of it. And, you know, I don't ever want to say it's the thing you should do, but it's one tool in your toolkit and it's got its purpose and got its place and got its reasons to try it. Okay, let's get talking about knowing your machine. And like I said, I put in the title, how well do you know your quilting machine? But really this applies to any machine that you're sewing or embroidering or quilting on. How well do you know your machine? Do you know the sound that the motor makes? Do you know the sound that the bobbin makes in the casing? Do you know what the thread looks like kind of in your peripheral vision as it's feeding down into the needle? Um, do you know the sound of a sharp needle going through fabric as opposed to a dull needle pop, pop, popping in fabric? All these little things are, they're a matter of time and of getting acquainted with your machine, but they can serve as early warning systems. So when something is off a little bit, even though you don't yet perhaps see a bad stitch, or if you're stitching in a long arm and you can't see it because it's underneath the quilt, this can be an early warning system. Something's wrong. I need to stop. I need to follow up on it and see what's going on. I can't even count the number of times that has happened for me. For one reason or another, the top thread is not feeding through quite right in my long arm and I'll see it kind of flash as it bobbles or wobbles a little bit more than it ought to, right? And I know what that should look like. And so even though I don't see anything wrong yet on my quilting surface, I'll stop, break thread, roll my quilt up and have a look underneath. And more often than not, that funny bobble has been my alert. Something is wrong, there's a rat's nest on the bottom or the bobbin maybe was coming to an end and jerked funny. It can be any number of things, but at least I find it out before going on and having a whole expanse of terrible tension or worse going on that I have to then spend the time to undo. So I've learned to listen to those early warning signals. You know, I mentioned the needle. 
um, a dull needle will pop, 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 pop in fabrics. You know, and different fabrics respond different ways too. So th there's an art, a bit of an art to this. But just knowing what it should sound like helps you to identify when it's not sounding quite right. And then you can investigate further. My Bernina, and I'm not the only one that finds this. This is common in Bernina long arms particularly. The, the bobbin rattles a little bit, both when it's getting empty and when it needs oil. So when we start to hear that little rattle, that's our first clue. Oh, hey, my bobbin's nearly empty. Or, oh, hey, I need to stop and put a drop of oil in my machine. And it's just those little things that we learn to listen for or watch for. And it can really, really help. Let's see what everyone is saying about this. Kim, good morning. I learned a lot from your videos. Great. Gail, quilted without a regulator yesterday, really liked it. Are the large stitches just a function of learning something new? They are a bit, Gail. If you're getting consistently two large stitches, that's your cue that you need to speed up that motor speed so that when you're moving at the same pace, you know, or moving your fabric if you're at a sit down, you'll get smaller stitches. There will be more stitches per second or per minute. So that's, that's your cue to... Um, speed up the motor a little bit. If your stitches are teeny, 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 tiny, that's your cue. You maybe need to slow the motor down a little to match your movements. And as you learn to move differently, more smoothly, faster, whatever, you know, you may need to fine tune that again. Janet, good morning. Gretchen, good morning. Awesome. So nice to hear from you all. By the way, did you want to hear about this project that's over my shoulder? I talked about it ever so briefly yesterday when, when we were on air. Um, I am, in fact, doing a digital design on it, and I thought of having it stitching in the background this morning. That would have been fun, but I wasn't sure how the noise of the machine would conflict with the mic that I'm using is like a lavalier style that kind of picks up room noise, so I opted not to have it stitching. But that is what I'm doing. So yesterday I had emails to do and things like that at my computer, so I brought it down into my studio, and I had Stella the long arm working away while I was doing my things on the computer. So yeah, that was kind of fun. Wendy, great topic. Good. Good, good. I'm glad. And I don't know really what more to say about it other than it is important. It can add to your enjoyment of quilting because it can avoid some of the unpicking that particularly at a long arm because it's so much sometimes can be really, really unpleasant. I do know one other tip. Lots of us long armers tend to listen to podcasts, audiobooks, YouTube shows, whatever, while we're quilting because it's sometimes a kind of mindless task. I do too. It's a wonderful thing. But I encourage you to spend at least some times listening without any devices on your ears, any noise canceling devices particularly, so that you can hear, you can really hear the sounds that your machine is making and really get to know it. Debbie is asking, do you ever finish quilting and then find a rat's nest or eyelashes on the back when you've taken it off the long arm? Occasionally I do, Debbie. More often I find those as I'm rolling up my quilt on the take-up roller, I'll see them come around, right? And if I see that, in fact, the friendship quilt that I did live and unscripted on Friday, for some reason there was one or two of those plume designs that had really poor tension. Don't know if I was nearing the end of a bobbin or exactly what it was because I didn't see it till a bit after the fact. And I actually did go back and undo two of those plumes and then, you know, started and stopped and joined up and requilted them because I thought they looked so poor on the back. So occasionally it does happen, but not, not terribly often. And this, this listening business really reduces how often because more often I find it the thread wobbles, or it makes a, a tiny clunk or something that alerts me there's something wrong and I go back and look right then. Uh, Barbara, a little off topic, what happened to the blue quilt you were doing? I finished it. That's what happened. And I mailed it back to Laura, whom it belongs to. I will try and get some pictures posted this week. I did take them, but it takes, it takes me a little time. <laughs> I laughed the other day. I saw another quilter um, posted a little reel and it had a picture of them quilting, I think cuttering with the rotary cutter. This is what you think I'm doing when I say quilting is my business. Here's what I'm actually doing. And he's sitting hunched over his computer typing. I feel like that some days too, because I, I spend more time in my business than I spend actually quilting. So sometimes this whole idea of posting and, and getting descriptions up and things like that takes time. So bear with me but I do have photos of it and I will show them. Janet, what's your favorite stitch design that you use mostly non-stitch regulated? If you watch the Friendship Quilt on Friday and, and the episode is called the Friendship Quilt, if you wanna go back and find that live stream, uh, I did a plume design and I love to do that one unregulated. Anything that's 
uh, very regular and repeating that I don't have to think too much about. I love to do unregulated. On that particular friendship quilt, I kept my regulator on because um, the backing had quite a bit of piecing in it and thick seam allowances that of course I couldn't see from the top. So I kept having to slow down for those and I didn't want to risk rushing over them at high speed and breaking a needle. So I did that when stitch regulated because I have that option, but I love doing it without the regulator. Um, the only ones that I don't love using a regulator for is kind of wide sweeping ones. So if I'm doing fairly large circles or loops because I can't go as fast, like like I could quilt faster with, with the stitch regulator off, if that makes sense, but I don't want to turn it up that high because then it's racing when I come to the end or when I need to take slower pauses or whatever. So then I find it more easy. I don't know if that made sense at all. I'm rambling, but I just do what feels, what feels right. But for sure, the repetitive over and over types of stitching, I love doing those with the regulator off with the manual stitching mode. Carol is asking, do you use the 40 weight thread on your binding, sunny in Minnesota? Typically I do, Carol, simply because I have over 50 colors of the 40 weight poly quilting thread. So I can almost find a perfect match, you know, to the binding on my quilt to use that at least for the top stitching that's on the top of the binding. I'm a machine binder for the most part. Bob and wise, I always match it to the bottom of the quilt, which, you know, sometimes is the same color as the top, but often is not. And so I, I vacillate back and forth between that from using my piecing thread, which is also a 40 weight, to using my quilting thread, which is a 40 weight polyester. Gail is asking, will next Saturday's class be available for replay? I have a conflict. Yes, it absolutely will, Gail. Um, in order to have the replay link, though, do sign up. Do register for the class, and then you'll get an email with the replay link and how long it's lasting and all of that. So, yeah. I think we've exhausted this topic, so let me just mention a couple things before we go. Next Saturday is a live workshop I'm offering that Gail just referred to. It's called Five Myths That Tie Freehand Quilters in Knots and How to Break Free of Them. Actually, it's called Five, Five, gosh, I can't even talk. Freehand Quilting Demythified, and the subtitle is Five Myths That Tie Freehand Quilters in Knots and How to Break Free of Them. I just hear the same the same thoughts so often from wannabe freehand quilters. I can't free motion quilt because X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. But you get the same fill in the blanks quite often. So I thought I wanna talk about these and show what my story has been, what some other students have experienced. So I've gathered a lot of stories and photographs and ideas together that will help you get beyond standing and staring and being afraid of wrecking your quilt. So just to be clear, because if you have asked, it's not a quilting lesson. We won't be standing at our long arms. You don't need to have a quilt sandwich ready or anything like that. We're talking about the art of free motion quilting and how to bust up some of these myths that might be holding you back from giving it a try, from diving in. Okay, Jen, hi Susan, tuning in late, getting Qmatic installed later today. Awesome. So here's a question for you guys, apropos of nothing. I've thought of doing a live stream, like my Friday ones are, um, that is a project with the Qmatic and literally just showing you that process of how I work through a whole quilt. I know it's a smaller audience that is doing that, but I thought that might be really beneficial. And if not a live stream, I I'll consider making a video of that, a pre-recorded one, because I think that could be helpful. For me, it was tricky getting started because there's just... There's so many decisions to make and, and the screen is so unfamiliar and you don't know how to trim the edges or whatever the case may be. So I thought it might be fun to um, air one of those episodes for those of you that do have a Qmatic. Yeah. Okay, so go forth, get to know your machine. Be sure to give a thumbs up before you go. Share these episodes with your friends. Let them know that I'm here. I'm doing a full month of coming live every day on YouTube. This was day 20. Different topics every day. If you have an idea for a topic, something you'd like to chat about, email me please. Info at stitchedbysusan.com and I will put that in the queue. So thanks for joining me. Have a great day, everyone. And I'm off to church. You can see I'm all dressed up pretty for it. So I'm off to that and a great day as well. So I'll check with you tomorrow.